This, this, this is a Tape Deck Podcast. Hello and welcome back to Will Run For. This is your host Tom and with me as always are Aaron. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Michael. Oh my god, hello. And Diana. Hi. Hey guys. Are you going to bleep out my curse or delete my curse? Yes. <laughs> this is a family show. One of the two. This is a family show. I was I was looking down cuz I was looking at Jack who was like rolling around on the ground, which is like witching hour um witching signals. Hour. <laughs> all the dogs so, and cats and animals. A little concerned. They're all psychotic right now. I think cuz of the eclipse like they are yeah, just <laughs> So wacky yesterday. Oh, maybe that's why he was wacky the last couple of days. Maybe he could sense the shift in the the, the moon. Tom I, looks so confused. I, w- <laughs> I will say, as a society, we all went a little hard on the eclipse. A little bit. I mean, I did not, but uh, if the rest of society did. Then... I just don't remember people traveling. No, it, oh I no, remember. that's def- and, that's definitely yeah. always. Does that always happen? Because yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I guess I yeah. heard about it more this time. Didn't we just have an it's eclipse just in like 2017? It was like 2017, yeah. and I remember standing outside uh, my office with everyone with the well, and I remember them being out of the glasses. Like I remember mm-hmm. a lot. Like people were traveling, and at that time, I think it was to a different state, but I don't remember which state. Yeah, but. We were in uh, Toronto, Niagara Falls, and they had like signs everywhere. They were expecting like a million people at Niagara Falls. Um, And then it was cloudy. So poor suckers. Hot tip. Don't go to Niagara Falls. It's really crappy. Also that. Like the falls are beautiful. It's the rest of it is like being in Las Vegas or Atlantic City. It's like being at Ocean City, Maryland or Wildwood. All right. Hold on. Don't compare the two. OCMD. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's not good. It's It's like like, being at Myrtle Beach. I like honestly couldn't believe how like there's this beautiful natural wonder. Uh, And then it's like built up with like this really tacky like town around it. I'm like, what is happening? Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Well, on a totally different note, yeah. this is episode 99, guys. I, it's taken us almost four full years, no. but we have officially gotten to episode 99 of our, um, you know, official episode count. I feel like we've come a long way. Yeah. I don't know that we've improved in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should find out because on our hundredth episode, we will be talking about some memories we have. We will do a. Um, it didn't. It ended up kind of lining up weird. Uh, so we will. We all be at springtime surprise. I think we're going to try and do an on the ground episode, um, and then we'll come back with a. S- abbreviated recap of springtime for the four of us because we really want to focus on celebrating hitting 100 yes so we're going to ask for some feedback on some of your favorite uh memories um what you love best about us basically compliment all four of us the entire time (laughs) it'll be fantastic (laughs) boost our egos a little bit more. If you'd like to request a song that we can serenade you with, <laughs> I celebrate Taylor's entire catalog. <laughs> yeah, so we'll put out some feedback uh, for some feedback for real, though, um, about, you know, maybe you have a favorite episode, maybe you had a favorite segment, just something that, you know, we can celebrate along the way on our 100th episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do we want to give an update? On the virtually live race. <gasps> yeah. You guys. Oh, yes. Yeah. Look. What, Tom? You know I'm into Look. I'm into the numbers. <laughs> mm-hmm. We've, as of a couple days ago, we officially sold out. Insane. Insane. Way 145 early too, yeah. registrants. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, That's crazy. Weeks before we thought we'd sell out. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, last year we always like the, med- the medallion. We get the picture of the medallion a few weeks before we, we push it out there. And then, you know, we spend the last like two weeks, like pushing for the sellout. And this year we, we didn't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Big thanks to On the Runs and Rise and Run. Absolutely. A hundred percent. For helping out as well. Yes. Yes. yes I yes. think that our sellout really uh, can be attributed to the two of them helping uh, in some way, because I know for sure that I saw on Rise and Run when Bob had posted about it, a number of people were like, oh, I'm signing up. And then we got a bunch of signups right away. And then when On the Runs posted about it, we had like seven New Hampshire people all of a sudden sign up. Oh, so. nice. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and say that's them. <laughs> Gonna say that was on our own. Could you imagine yeah. listening to one of their like actual professional podcasts and they're like, go check out Will Run Four, and then you come over they, here to just nonsense. They probably can't tell the difference once I start doing the New England accent. That's true. They're probably like, oh, whoa, is that Eric? <laughs> is that guy from Worcester? <laughs> whoa, whoa! Oh my god! Can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yes um and we should have the medallions in hand by um tomorrow or thursday Something like that, yeah. and i will count them so by the time this episode drops we maybe we sold out again who knows i'll depend Might on when we, a few openings. we, we yeah. open it again but uh we were told by um Rag cuts that they were sending a few extras so i'm going to count to double check to make sure we have enough for all of us and then um, I will release a couple extra spots. I know I have a couple people who've messaged about it. So I will message those people first. And then after that, I'll publicly put on Instagram who, how many spots we have left. And whoever is there first, first come, first serve. And it's less about selling out. It's, it's incredible, the participation. Like, yeah. it's so cool. Like, thank you very much to everybody that pays any attention to this nonsense. We're so, we're so (laughs) humbled, really. Like, we're not awesome. Well, I'm awesome. But like. (laughs) Are you going to blow it up on social media again on the day? Of course I'm going to blow it up on social media. Yes. Oh, my God. Um, I would like to thank. Uh, Rag Cuts, Stefan, Steph- yes. Stefan, how did we decide we're saying his name? We didn't hear. Um, so he donated half of the medallions to us so that wow. we could have more proceeds to put towards yep. um, mm-hmm. our charity for the so year. That was big chunk. So that so was a huge chunk. We should get to at least $2,000 for... We will be yeah. well over. I think we're... So say at least. Yeah, yeah, I believe we're... Somewhere around twenty three hundred dollars between registrations and donations. That's so to cool. be able to donate to a charity. That is so cool. What was the charity again? Unite for Unite her. for her. Yeah. Very very cool, Michael. Do we have any new five star reviews? No, we don't. That's a disappointing wah. week for us. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but as always, we appreciate when people share the show and all. So there is that yes uh just share it with your friends share it on social media all that hey what are we running for this week i'll go first i am very confused by this i feel like you're being very weird why am i being weird i don't know but there's a vibe (laughs) there's a vibe like isn't there like doesn't it feel weird i'm sorry something feels weird (laughs) the cat butt the cat butt is what's weird i just Tom's being impacted by the eclipse like the like the dogs like it's good luck. <laughs> it's oh my god. Just... All right. So what I'm running for this week. <laughs> Tom, what do you why don't you tell us what you're running for? I called it Tommy drama because I feel like I have these massive mood swings and I get all in my feels and blah 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 and that is that why we're 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 there's a vibe? I don't know. There's always a vibe. <laughs> but I'm running to push through all of these obnoxious low feelings and and get back to um get back to a happier place where I enjoy mm-hmm. I enjoy every aspect of this and it naturally motivates me to train more and and get more miles and just be better prepared for when the races pop up Mm. so that's what i'm running for 
I'm going to work. I'm working through it. I'm working through it. <laughs> you know, it, it happens to the best of us. I think we are all we all end up in that space at some point. I think that's like this podcast, right? That's the important part is we'd like to talk about how running sucks a lot sometimes. This is true. So that's me. That's what I'm running for this week. For drama. My own obnoxious um, mood swings. I'm, I'm running for the start of allergy season. Hey. I'm like, what? His, his, uh, his like, thing is like <laughs> not necessarily a good thing. I'm not really sure. When he put that, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. How are you running for this allergies? This is something good. This is what we're running for. Yeah, but how are you running for them? <laughs> because every time I go to run now, I won't be able to breathe when I get back True. to the house. It's been real bad. <laughs> it has been bad this year. The other day, what day was it that I was like a total mess? Oh yeah, yeah. That was yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I was worse than even you. Yeah, yeah. I keep thinking I'm getting sick, and I think it's allergies. Yeah, my eyes have been crusty all day. So, ew. I'm running for allergies because that's what season we're in. Okay, that's the season of my life. That's my season. Oh God, are you a basic white woman? Is that happening? (laughs) I'm in my season. Hashtag race report. (laughs) Are we still doing seasons? Is that still a thing? I don't know. What like (laughs) dress for your season? All right. Anyway, uh, I'm running for the new Nespresso machine that we got while we were in Canada. Ooh. Yes. Uh, so we, at a discounted we, rate because of the exchange. We fancy now. <laughs> Wait, so uh, you bought it in Canada and brought it home. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. brought it in Canada. It actually did save us a lot of money. Yes. As a matter okay. of fact. Oh, yep. nice. Um, and uh, we got like a whole bunch of extra coffee with it it was fantastic we got an amazing deal on it we got a little milk frother that comes with it so that's real fun and so we've been doing cappuccinos and lattes like every day oh nice it's like a total like life changer yeah you'll yeah you'll you'll save um money from um connor running to starbucks three times a day Oh, no, he'll never use it. He'll just go to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say, do you want us to show you how to use it about 100 times? And he'll be like, no, I'll just go to Starbucks. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. That's fair. But for us, yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, there was a whole Nespresso store and they yes. made you samples and everything. Yep. And that's why we decided to pull oh the trigger. God. We've talked about an espresso for a while. I, like, I'm not sure why it took us so long to get one. I love it. It's delightful. And the little like milk frother is super easy to use. It heats the milk and spin like it's it like has the little yeah. whip like whisk in it. Ooh. And it's like 70 seconds and like you got warm Done. warmed frothy milk. I love yeah. it. It's fantastic. Yeah. And then I did a strength workout after we bought it and carried it a mile and a half back to our house. Oh, true. nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> It's true. I think Kate has one. I'm trying to remember. Like, I feel like I knew some people that have them and like them. Yeah. Well, I knew people who had the Nespresso, but I, you know, it's the milk frother that does it for me. Mm. Because I think that, like, while an espresso is nice to have, I want to be able to, like, have frothy milk and, like, you know, have a nice cappuccino or a latte. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's the way to so. do it. Nice. Cool. Um, for me, I am trying to amp up my speed work. Uh, we nice. are registered for the St. Michael's 10K. So I think I'm going to try and get, because it's flat over there, try mm. and get um, an updated proof of time because I think mine's about to expire. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try to actively uh, get slightly mm. faster for for that so that um i can try yeah, do you and know what try and what the something. calculation is for the mcmillan for the half for a half proof of time no i don't no not off the top of my yeah. head but um i figured out that since they switched the proof of time to five hour and 230 i do actually have a proof of time for next year that i didn't realize i had oh nice because i had a 221 half marathon last year and the proof of time is like literally 222 and like two seconds. And I have a 221 in like 58 seconds. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, Still counts. It like, it like just barely <laughs> makes mm-hmm. it. Yep. Yep. That's the way to do it. Yeah. We're not, um, I'm not doing dopey again. Um, probably until there's another anniversary year. So this will just be yeah. for like the next couple of springtimes. 
kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. So you guys didn't sign up for um dope or anything for the marathon weekend today, nope. right? Mm-mm. Yep. Nope, it's getting crazy. Mark, marked safe from. Marked safe from. Yeah, it's just it's getting like it's getting so expensive, and mm-hmm. we've done it, you know, so many times. And no, I agree. I mean, it break. was. I think it was real hard for me to like sign up for Dopey, knowing how expensive it, how much, like it increased a decent amount this year, mm-hmm. and I was like, I, but. I had said that I wanted something to work towards and something keep me motivated to keep moving forward. So I pulled the dumb, dumb, dopey car, uh, whatever. Huh. Out. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. to each their own. And there's the... There's no, the... I said I never wanted to do it. And here I am. This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> dumb decisions were made. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's how that how that's how it goes. We actually decided we're going to do one day um, in the parks when we were there for springtime and bought a one day ticket. And it's so genius. I was going to say one days are it's ridiculously unbelievable. expensive. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea how much yeah. it was. So would you say that proof of time is a goal of yours? And now, it's time for our Will Run 4 Goal Getters. Congrats on making your goals, you getters. Oh, you the shit. Now, speaking of Dopey, we got Laura Duxon as the first person on the Goal Getters list who, mm-hmm. um, for sure, got in for Dopey of next year so maybe you guys will have to come down and cheer here's the thing here's the thing I saw that she registered and I'm like it would be so cool to meet her in person mm-hmm. it really yeah it really you guys would. should come and just cheer get one of those airbnbs in the area <laughs> <laughs> okay I don't know about that but like maybe pick up like a cheap room at like you know <laughs> an all-star or like a pop or something like that and like just come cheer or then you don't have to worry about the races or facetime you (laughs) when you're standing next to her (laughs) that's not the same it's much more economical i would just put that out there it's fair it's fair but i did sure but if you're not doing if you're not doing the races then you know you could make it cheaper make it cheaper (laughs) let's 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 get through springtime and then We'll talk. We'll talk. Uh, Laura says that she wants to see you. So, Laura, I um, I would like you to slide into both Tom and <laughs> Diana's DMs because you and I talked about this today when I saw that you signed up and you said that you would love to see all four of us. Nice. So I'm going to need you to do some work on this, Laura. <laughs> Maybe we could split a room with Matt Algeyer and he could make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say oh a, a DM from from Laura would be a nice break from the just the smut that's currently in my DMs. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Well, speaking of Laura, I'm gonna go first since I already mentioned her name. Uh, my goal race was a little over two weeks ago. Uh, get a sub one. 36 10 miler as a proof of time weather wasn't great 45 fahrenheit rain but those don't didn't bother me it was the wind Mm. not a flat flat course crowded course to the dead stop two minute after the start oof and a little bridge which we ran twice i worked my butt off even got a negative split and a 10k pr during it but i didn't reach my goal I got a 136.57. Oh my gosh, that's still so close, Laura. Yeah, Uh, but it's okay. I'm faster than ever. I've never run a sub 60 10K ever, and I did it during a 10 miler. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I know if the wind stayed away, I would have gotten my time goal. I never thought I would be able to hold this pace for that for so long. I thought of trying again two weeks uh, in two weeks for sub 136, but the weather is suddenly a lot warmer. I decided my mental health is more important than taking off a minute of my time. I'm embracing the rest of working so hard for six months on speed. I still got my proof of time. Next goal is 
Dopey Bib, stay tuned. Things are quite different with registration than five years ago. Well, I just spoilered yeah. that yes. for everyone. Spoilers. Yes. <laughs> so wait, a 10 miler and an hour and 36 minutes? Yes. I am so slow. God, Laura, <laughs> you're, that's amazing. My point is that she's fast. My point. I'm sorry. <laughs> What is it, the look that Hannah has on her face? I'm not sure what's happening. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> is it the weird vibe? There's something happening here. <laughs> <laughs> what it is isn't exactly clear. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I went completely out of order and just decided that I was going to do Laura. Yes, just um, throw us off. Well, there's only so many of them. That's so there's only cool. like a very few of them. So, Michelle. Uh, Michelle. Diana and I can just go back yeah. know, like we sometimes do. Yeah, okay. I think that works. All right. So then we've got EcoFit, who is still going strong with my 10,000 plus steps per day every day. My goal right now is to get better from all the stupid health things. I uh, have a successful and relatively easy surgery and start training for MCM. I have some friends who just registered too, so we can stay accountable. The fur babies and husband have been excellent nurses. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she's been, you know, laid up, but it's it's crazy Suffering. that she's still getting her uh, her steps in. Yeah, I was just going to mm-hmm. say that's crazy that she's been, um, you know, having problems. And I mean, she keeps posting every day about her dog taking care of her. So yep. she's been struggling and still 10,000 steps a day. Mm-hmm. Insane. Yep. Uh, give me all the coffee who we just had on an inside the runner studio. So if you haven't listened to her, mm-hmm. go back to last week and, uh, go listen. She's got this weird uh, thing about pancakes. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, fell off the trying to be more consistent with stretching. So going to do baby steps and just focus on this week, trying to incorporate stretching on my run days, hopefully build from there. Put myself out there and joined a marathon relay team of people I didn't know and had a blast. Ran my leg with an awesome lady and was it was a great day and race. That's cool. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she talked about that, I think. I don't know if she did. Was it on the episode or was it off air that she mentioned that she had joined the relay team? I think she mentioned before we'd started recording. Yeah, that's like a really awesome um, thing to put yourself out there for. All right, uh, Mandy Poppins. Uh, now that I know my, um, now that I know I'm in, my goal is to stay injury free until Dopey 2025. Mm, there nice. you go. Nice. Yeah, there are uh, there are a ton of people who just got in for for Dopey. So sounds like it's gonna be a party. Uh, Kate Laflame, first time goal getter. I was like, I don't recognize that name. <laughs> so. I constantly start getting um, I constantly start getting into running or exercises, but also constantly quit. I mean, I feel that. Yeah, <laughs> I've signed up for the 2024 Wine and Dine Challenge, which will be my first challenge. I did my first half marathon at Wine and Dine in 2022 and struggled the last three miles of the race. I'm determined to do better this time. My goal over the next couple of months is to build a strong base before I start increasing my mileage. Absolutely. That's the key. My long-term goal goals are to finish the challenge strong and to lose 50 pounds. 2024 has been the year I'm starting to take, take control of my mental and physical health, and I'm determined not to quit this time. I'm tracking my food, my water intake, and building a workout routine. I've lost 10 pounds so far and need to keep my momentum going. No more excuses. I love that. Uh, yes. That's All of incredible. That, that, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but it is hard sometimes to, um, you know, to keep going. So, uh, you know, we can help hold you accountable. Keep uh, goal getting. Yeah. All right. Uh, We got Marsha, who surprised everyone in the world um, with this today. Apparently, my goal is now goofy training. (laughs) Because <laughs> Marsha is another one who swore that she was never running a marathon again. She was retired. She quit. 
she was done looking at you, Megan Avis, um, and suddenly now is running goofy. All right. Um, Joe A. Pat. Actually, follow the Nike Run Club. Be serious with my health. <laughs> Everyone nice. is trying to keep it, like, kick it into high gear right now. Everyone's like, well, yeah. guess I should get my life back in track. Uh, well then, because then we got Main Street Mile Meg, who says to eat whole, nutritious foods. So she's on the the health trolley also, mm. and follows doctors' walking only orders. Oh yeah, mm, yeah. All right, and then um, run, cat, cat, run to have fun at the springtime surprise challenge. It's easy. We'll be there. We'll yep. be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. Um, Run Disner says to stay healthy till London. Yeah. So he will not be at springtime because he'll, he'll be, be in over London. in London. Oh. Doing the marathon. We will miss him. Yes. Is that his second major? Has he done Chicago uh, yet? I, that's quite, I think he's doing Chicago later this yeah, year. Yeah, I think he's doing Chicago mm. this year. Mm. Yes. All right. The GB wraps. Not be blinded by the eclipse. <laughs> nice. It's Zen theme music now. Oh my god! <laughs> Just he's amazing. made it. I mean, he's he's so famous now that he gets his own, <laughs> own theme music. song. Well, wow. I mean, you need a theme song. What was that? What was it? Uh, was that Hollywood Shuffle where you needed a theme song, or oh was that god. the other one? Uh... Who had a theme song? No, it wasn't Hollywood Shuffle. Hollywood Shuffle is amazing. Everybody needs a theme song. It's true. Oh my God, everyone needs walkout uh, music. What's What's your theme song, Tom? Something by Dave Matthews. No, it changes. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like you're the music guy, so there's got to be like you've had to have thought of this before. This week, it's Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Turn around. I've heard that song so eyes. many times yeah. now. It's, this oh, week. It's obnoxious. Everyone had a reel to it this year, this week. Everyone did. All right. Well, I guess we're not finding that out right now, but you no. think about it and we'll maybe we'll come up with our theme songs for when we reintroduce ourselves in episode 101. Well, we can ask, what should our theme songs be? Oh. Oh. So maybe we'll do some stickers on uh, Instagram and ask people what everyone thinks our songs should be. What each mm. person's theme song yeah. should be. And don't I like it. Don't just tell me it should be Taylor Swift. Like you gotta go more <laughs> do something better than that. And you gotta like say a specific song, yeah. not just like a, an artist. It has to be a song that yeah. you th- think reminds you of us in some way. Well, we're gonna when this episode drops, we're gonna we're gonna put that out there. Find out. I'll blow it up on social media. <laughs> oh god. Uh since everyone was kind of talking about springtime and I didn't mention this, um, I think that we do not have an official meetup uh planned a lot because I am tired and I don't want to commit myself to uh being in a specific spot for too long or at any point in the day because I have no idea how I'm gonna feel. But My plan is to be at the expo on Thursday for a good amount of the day. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably be hanging out um, kind of where we have in the past um, when you're walkway in the the walkway in the middle, when you're on your way towards getting the bibs, we're usually hanging out on like if you're walking towards getting your bibs, we're usually hanging out on the right hand side. Uh, There's like a little half wall. (laughs) There's like a beer, (laughs) beer, beer stand over there. So I think that's our plan is to get there probably around the time the expo opens and hang out for, I don't know, three, four hours. I'll be there because I'm not getting a bib, so I won't be in line at any point. Yes, that's true. So I will be outside. Nice. Yeah. So I think that instead of an official meetup, that, uh, that's, that's the plan for, yeah. for us is to just sort of be at the expo. And we're not really doing too much park time. Like we're doing, like we said, the, the one day. So yeah. we'll probably be hanging out and drinking cider after all the races. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah. That's the way to do it. That's yeah. where we'll be. I, I don't know why that just made me so happy. <laughs> I won't be doing that on Saturday because I'll be in the woods for like eight hours. It's true. What's mm. this race again? Uh, you've it's it's got a weird name. Funist fifty k. Okay. 
It looks like funnest without the uh, extra N. Extra N. Yeah. Because I le- uh, when he first Fun-ness. signed up for it, I thought it was. I thought it. That's what it was. Was funnest. <laughs> Have you fifty k? And then I, he was like, "No, it's funest." I was like, "Oh, okay. wow. Have you thought about the logistics of that? Like, Wait. how are you getting there? Like, are you going to yeah, Uber we're, or something? We're renting a car. You're renting driving. a car. Got it. Yeah, we're driving a, a car. car. Yeah, we don't use the buses and stuff anymore because of yeah, uh, makes sense. Concerns. Got it. Yeah. yeah, got it. Yeah. So we're gonna try and stay off of Disney transportation as much as possible. I mean. I, the monorail is hard to stay off of yeah. when you're like we do our best. going around yeah. the, but like as much as we can, you know, and I'll probably be wearing a mask and have gloves on when I'm on the monorail because the monorail is of all disgusting. of the places in Disney <laughs> is actually probably the grossest of it's all really of gross. the places yeah, yeah, that I can yeah, think yeah. of. Yeah. It's yeah. really gross. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get really packed in there too. It's, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but yes, we'll have a car, so he's going to take the car on nice. on Saturday. Yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah, so if yeah. I get eaten by a gator, please return to Rome. <laughs> well, how will I know whether you got eaten by a gator? Well, if the, if you see my phone in the middle of a swamp on Find My, mm-hmm. and it's slowly moving around, you're going to know. Oh, <laughs> how you're going to know? I, I just assumed that like, no. I would still think it was you. <laughs> yeah, it'll be Pan. slowly go. <laughs> like the TikTok cross, yeah. but with Michael's uh, phone. With the phone, <laughs> you can hit the you can hit the sound button and uh, you can listen in the swamp to chase him. <laughs> Maybe I should. Uh, I should have been been TikTok Michael instead of TikTok uh, Tink TikTok for Tink. <laughs> for the five K. <laughs> I mean. But Hook is the hero of the Peter Pan stories, right? Sure. Is this a hot take? You always have these hot no, takes. No, I mean, because Peter Pan kidnaps children and brings them to an island. No, he doesn't kidnap children. They're lost. <laughs> They're, Wendy wasn't lost. Lind- she was in Wind- her bedroom. Wendy... <laughs> Went of her own accord. Wendy wanted She's to go. She's a child. We have to so talk about. So is he. <laughs> she cannot consent to that. He's thinking because uh, the Once Upon a Time oh. Peter Pan was a villain. He's just assuming. I that think the, the real, actual... the original story. He was much more a villain. On a very special we'll run for. Disney. We yeah. talk about consent. <laughs> yes, it's important. It's important. And Peter Pan. And Peter Pan. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, because yeah, they um, that's why there weren't any lost girls because they were too clever to get lost. Right. Right. I mean, the All one right. kid had a stuffed animal. He was like three. <laughs> that's true. Wow, it's true. Hey, we ran some Hot races. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, order in which they happened, I guess. That which. Works. Um, Saturday. So Saturday races were Hot Chocolate Philly and the Soul of the City. Soul of the City 10K. Yep. Okay. Ooh. Do you guys want to go first? Yeah. Um, and we've talked about this race a lot. This is one of our favorite Baltimore races. Mm-hmm. And we do it every year because it's part of B3. So we don't usually have back-to-back races. For Soul of the City, like we typically do not have a Sunday race. So Soul of the City is usually one of the races where I try and like push myself and kind of blow it out as as Tom would say. But we knew we were running the next day. So we took it relatively easy. And, and it's of, a 10K, right? It's a 10K. Just reversed our intervals. Um Took it relatively slow, um, but kind of just maintained like a decent pace. Um, mm-hmm. All of us, uh, we did it with Ryan and Nicole. All of us were extremely undertrained for both races. <laughs> so uh, we were a little nervous. <laughs> um, <gasps> so I felt really good during that race. Um, the premium, I'm wearing the premium. It was cute this oh. year. A uh, little half zip, little purple half zip for the girls. I don't know what the boys got. It's a gray long sleeve. Half zip. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so there's usually a, a pretty good premium. 
And um, Tom had some feelings during that race, which I'll let him share. But I will oh, say they uh, upgraded the beer. So they used to uh, have beer from this local brewery, which I was not a huge fan of. And this year they replaced it with Heavy Seas. So they had Loose Ooh, Cannon nice. and Blonde. Yeah. And the weather was supposed to be relatively good. So I actually bought the VIP drink package, which included some different types of drinks and then you could get like mimosas and uh, bloody Marys and that kind of thing. So I did that. Um, Unfortunately it was super windy that day. And in between the wind, uh, the buildings, it was like a wind tunnel. Oh God. So uh, if it was not windy, it would have been fantastic, but Mm. slightly colder than I wanted it to be. Um, But yeah, I had a really good race. Tom, I um, <laughs> I uh, I had a really good first half of the race. You stayed with us for a lot of it. Yeah, and then I hit a bit of a wall, and then it got into my head, <laughs> and then uh... I just, you know, did a little point to point running. Um, it wasn't great, but I finished. I uh. I was really intimidated because I was also registered for the race the next day. And I was like, if I didn't meet a time goal um, during the 10 K um, it was definitely going to inform my decision on what to do the next day, which we'll get to, but I do love this race. It is a very well put on race. Like Diana said, like the after party, if it was a little bit warmer and less windy, it would have been perfect conditions. Um, cause we were ready to have a good time, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, this is one that we'll probably do every year because it, the logistics are good and we're very familiar with the course. Um, it's charm city run. They always put in a good event. Yeah. Um, the metals are usually pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, like everything is, it's just, it's a really good option if you're in like that, like near the Baltimore area. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny yeah. because it used to be like the first warm ish race of the year. Like it used to be the first race you do where it was like 60 degrees and like, yeah. you're like, Oh, yeah. it's kind of nice. And the last like three ish years, it's been frigid. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's because so- every oh, the seasons have shifted. So like now it stays colder for a little longer yeah. and then immediately becomes summer apparently because we are now 78 degrees today. So yeah, I don't, I can't figure out the seasons anymore. I don't know no. what happens. I keep saying it, it's cursed because it moved locations because it used to start and end in McHenry row. Cause there used to be a charm city run down there. Um, but they raised their rent. So charm city run left and, uh, uh... they changed the location and I think it's been that course was better when it was there. Better course. It was a slightly better course. It was like more, it felt more like a block party afterwards. It was just, it was a little bit of a better race when okay. it was at McHenry Row. But it's not bad now. It's just, you know, it's just not as good. It's cursed. It's just, I think it's the weather is cursed. Oh, yeah. 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 So. But yeah, I don't know. We've recapped this race probably, I don't know, every year because we do it every year. So, oh, uh, yeah, probably we have. So, yeah. uh, well, except for in 2020. Yeah, except, except for, for 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, I was yeah. registered for. Price. I think I did it virtually because I just was actually going through my premiums and I have a 2020 premium. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, at th- this, that point, I mean, uh-huh. it would have been like all ready to go and signed up for and everything because mm-hmm. th- this was early. Still pretty early in the 2020. Yeah. So, yeah, um, fall. In that, yeah. In that time. But uh, yeah, this has in, been my. In those times. Yeah, this has been my PR race a few times. I don't know. I really like this race. It's a great race. Like, if I was feeling at all good, like, I, would, <laughs> yeah. I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't complain so much. But like, no, it's a great race. Like. You're having a time lately, Tom. It's fine. I'll he's, work through it. He's been having. I'll work through it. I've been having a long time. An emotional reaction to most of the races he's done of late. I mean, I feel like I, I, fe- I understand that. I feel like I've been, I've had a long, a long time too. So I, I get it. it yeah. Sometimes it takes you a long time to get out of the funk. It's are fine. you? What races are you doing for springtime? All of them. All of them. Oh, you are doing the challenge. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember if you were doing the challenge. <laughs> okay. Well, so I mean, this was look. If it if it devolves into walking, and I find you. 
we will we will finish together. Oh yeah, his plan is you. I don't know if you know that, <laughs> but he said that yesterday. He was like, "Well, I'm just going to walk with Aaron," as I think what he said. Look, we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh man, we'll see what happens. My only plan right now <laughs> is to possibly try to do. Um, some intervals in the beginning of the 10 miler so that I'm not super stressed at the end of it. So, uh, but I can get into that after I talk about hot chocolate yeah, okay. because that that's kind of like the segue into, into that. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so hot chocolate Philly, I signed up for this a full year ago when last year uh, the 15K got turned into a 5K because of the thunder and the oh, lightning that was the severe storm. storm. Yeah. I remember that. Was in the that. Area. And yeah. so all of a sudden we were out there and they're like, we got to start the race and you're only running a 5K. And then the next thing you knew, people were just running and we were like, did we start? What's happening? And we were just running. It's like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> because they were like, we have to get everyone off of this course because the thunderstorms are coming. Um. So, yeah, we I signed up for this because they gave us a discount code uh, at the end of that race to say sorry for having to cut the course short. Mm. So I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it next year. Not expecting life to change so incredibly drastically. Uh, Emily had not signed up for it last year, but like a month ago, I was like, are you doing this race? And she's like, oh, I never signed up. And I was like, well can you sign up so that I don't have to walk alone? <laughs> <laughs> so she signed up. So that was fun. Um, but like the plan was that we were going to do this like leisurely. We're like, it's hot chocolate. Hot chocolate's like a walker friendly race. So we'll walk it. Like we'll try. I said, you know, I've got springtime coming up. So I've got to walk like a 16 minute mile for that. So I'll try and walk like a faster pace, you know, and see how it goes. And, but, Nothing crazy. I mean, 16 is not leisurely, but we were like... 16-minute between... mile walk is so fast. Yes. It's not easy. I know. So we, were, I said, like, you know, I've got to at least try and do some of that just to see kind of where I'm at again, because I haven't been walking fast and I haven't been training and I haven't even barely been biking. So I honestly have no idea where my fitness is. Yeah. Well, then, like, the week of, I get a text from Emily that's like... um, did you know that there's like a 15 minute pace requirement? And I was like, no, like that's, that's nope. faster than run Disney. Like what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I am not re like, we're not prepared for that. And so then we we're like, well, we're going to have to run walk a little bit. So I was like, all right, we'll do intervals. And I will, if we can get through, like, if we can start at the very front with like the nine minute milers, cause they don't check corrals. Yeah. Um, I was like, if we can start up front, get ahead, and then we can do like some one ones or something for the first three miles, then we'll have like a little bit of a buffer and we can like walk fast towards the end. Well, th it's not like Disney where there's like a lot of time in between the corral releasings. Yeah. So there's only like 30 seconds between <laughs> corral release. And so you hear them going off really quick. So by the time we got to like mile three ish, we were still a little stressed about whether or not like calculating the time yeah. and like where we were. So we're like, we got to keep running through. So I'm like, let's just keep doing the one ones until like, we feel like we can't do them anymore. At least get to the turnarounds because it was, they changed the course. It did not go through Philly at all. Like there was oh. literally none of Philly. It was, it went from the art museum just straight down kelly drive and we ne never even went into the city or around yeah. um like be down ben franklin around the circle we oh, did nothing so i was like this like yeah it was so weird so there was an it was just literally a kelly drive out and back and that's all it was yeah that's pretty rough it that's was windy because yeah. it was saturday when uh, you guys ran so it was windy, windy like, and cold <laughs> like when we did that stupid philly race. yes oh yeah and how windy that, that, that oh road God. was when we did it yeah it was that's so same road. cold yeah, yeah it's the same, same road. road so it was yeah. cold like wind tunnel like and i'm like this river. sucks so then we're like we get to the out like where we do the turnaround and we see like the 13 minute pacer and vanessa beast Co coast pacing was doing the pacing so we see the the 13 minute miler and then we see vanessa not too far behind her 
because at that point she would have only been about four minutes behind, I guess. But like, it just felt like we didn't have a lot of time. And then we see Vanessa and there's like literally nobody with her. And we're like, I thought there's a 15 minute pace requirement. There's no one behind her. It looks like they're picking up stuff and there's like no sweeper. We're, we're like super confused. So now we have no idea what's going on. And we're like, we just, we got to keep moving. So yeah. we ended up like walk running the whole thing, which I, I was not prepared for. I was stressed out the entire Ugh. time. There was like no relaxing at all. Um, we ended up walking, walk running with um, the two or the 13 minute pacer ended up, she was doing intervals. Mm. So we joined her for a little while. Um, and then she actually took off on us because <laughs> uh, I mean, I wasn't prepared yeah. to run nine miles. So no. um, I ended up doing, we ended up around a 14 ish minute pace, but I was stressed the whole time about whether or not I was going to like finish or like whether we were going to get too far behind. So I felt like I had to walk run the whole time. So it wasn't relaxing at all. And then we see John um, Swanson from the um, Beast Coast, and he tells us that Vanessa had messaged him that they basically swept everyone off the course by mile four who was behind the 14 minute pacer, which is why Vanessa was by herself when we saw her. It's like the most bizarre yeah. race in the entire world. And I have no, no idea what happened. No There's explanation. No explanation. Yeah. Nothing. Um, what's, uh, what's social media looking like after yeah, that? I, I tried to find stuff on, um, a couple of the local run group boards and like a couple people mentioned it, but not like in any great mm. detail. So I don't think that there was like that many people back there. Um, or at least that are part of the groups. Mm. And then I, when I was messaging with, um, John, he said that, you know, Vanessa didn't even get an explanation other than that they'd get in touch with her. Because, like, the thing is that I felt bad for, like, Vanessa and John is that they own this company and they're the Pacers. So, like, are they getting blamed for it? Like, because their name's on the sign. So, yeah. like, you know, the people who are with Vanessa, like, you know, I, I'm speculating and I'm, you know, I don't know that any of this actually happened. Um, and I'm sure if Vanessa and John listen, because I know John um, and Vanessa sometimes listen. Um, you know, if they have an answer and they want to tell us, you know, great. I would love to know what happened because I, I don't know. It was, it was very bizarre. And it's, it's hot chocolate. Like everyone yeah, like families around do the nation that, right? is like yeah, familiar yeah. with hot, the hot chocolate series. Cause like everyone does them. You get the like bowl of hot chocolate and the, the fondue and like all of the snacks. It's a great like reward. It's, it's like kid friendly because of that yeah i uh we've never done one but we did that like hot cider run which is i think the yeah. same company and it was like families like people with like strollers and yeah. stuff and they have so a 5k weird. and a 10k they didn't have a 15k when we did it i don't think um but like yeah, everybody kind of took off together is how they, they did have it. a 5k a 10k and a 15k and the 5k starts earlier than the other two when the 10k and the 15k start at the same time mm. I don't know. Um, not a great race experience. Yeah, I mean, no. I've done hot chocolate multiple times now. Um, it was one of my first, it was one of the first races I did, like as I was graduating towards the half marathon, like yeah. I did it like the month before my half marathon as a training run. Um, so I've done this race before and I've, done it in philly like i mean last year i can't speak to the experience because we had the lightning but they changed the course completely i don't know everything was weird about it yeah hmm. i i normally would love to recommend hot chocolate because i think it's such a fun friendly course and then you get like a cool medal you they give um a decent premium because you always get like a zipper jacket um and then they also give you the like all the goodies at the end you get like the fondue the hot chocolate there's like a banana there's a cookie there's like wafers there's a marshmallow there's all the stuff to dip into your chocolate yeah it's fantastic yep i'm actually looking at like their website and i don't see anything really on social media either but it's like all their photos are like families and then they even have like a tips for running your first 5k like yeah yeah 
And then to be sweeping beyond 14 minutes is Yeah, insane. especially when you have a 15-minute l- limit. Like, first of all, 15 is tight to begin with. Like, yeah. that's not beginner-friendly at all. And then, to, so to not even have a beginner-friendly pace requirement, but then also to then sweep, like, underneath what you said your pace requirement was. Mm. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't have good feels about hot chocolate right now. And I don't know whether this is like, I'm wondering, because I know a lot of other people have run hot chocolate in other cities. So I don't know whether this was because Philadelphia had changed like the way the course needed to go and they couldn't get permits. I, like, so they had to have like a um, a different pace requirement so that they could open up Kelly Drive. Like, I don't know what happened. But Kelly Drive's not even open on the weekend, is it? Yeah, weird. I don't know. I don't normally have terrible race reviews, but this one wouldn't wasn't good, and I would not recommend it, especially if you're a beginner. I mean, I guess if you're like a if you're not worried about like speed, I guess it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from the back of the pack perspective, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that stinks. Well, that was Saturday. Um, anybody have a more positive race experience <laughs> uh yeah i guess so yeah it's, i'll review the race itself i did the april, uh, april fool's half in atlantic city new jersey Ooh. because i thought i needed a proof of time for disney <laughs> and i did not uh which then i found out and i was like oh my god i gotta go down there so anyway uh i will say there uh, unfortunately i signed up at the last minute uh, because they had a nice packet pickup system where there was actually a location up here by us. Oh, yeah. that's uh, nice. Since a lot of the people who would be running that would be from our area. Yeah. yeah. There was actually one like two miles from our house. Of course, I signed up after that. So I couldn't pick it up there. Yeah, because. And had to go to Atlantic City on Friday after work. Wait, yeah, because you waited until like Wednesday to <laughs> yes. sign up, like of the week of. And the packet pickup was like on Monday yeah. up here. Yeah. So so I can't complain about that. I did this to myself. He texts uh, me. He's like with a screenshot of it. I was like, oh, well, that's cool that they did, yeah. a, did a packet pickup. He's like, yeah, doesn't help me. I'm like, I didn't yeah. say it did. I'm just saying it was nice <laughs> that they had it. <laughs> Fortunately, I work like 15 minutes from Atlantic City, so I had, mm. was able to drive in on Friday. Yeah. But my God, like this is nothing about the race, but you had to pick up the packet in a, in Resorts Casino. Oh, it was like yeah. an episode of the freaking Walking Dead Boomers. It was insane. <laughs> it was like, I mean, I haven't, I work like, like I said, 15 minutes away. I had to know the last, I can't tell you the last time I was in a casino down there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, my God, I had a park. And then also, if I had stayed longer than running in, getting my bib and getting out, I would have had to pay $20 for parking. Yeah. That for, is the only bad part about the a, Atlantic City races in general is that you have to park at the casinos. The casinos. Yeah. So, well, yeah, technically you don't because I didn't well, race yeah, day. That's true. But anyway, yeah. So <laughs> I want I wander through the zombie horde and go get my bib. <laughs> Um, it was packet pickup was was fine. It was super simple, easy. It's a pretty small expo. Like yeah, it's yeah, not it's like not a huge. full expo. No, no, no. You just walk in. Yeah. You get your bibs. You get your shirt. You kind of head back. So I got out of the casino as quickly as possible, um, and avoided the twenty dollar charge for parking because uh, I was in and out so fast. Nice. So you know when you when when you park in a garage, that, there's a time limit because if you can't find a space, you can exit, kind of thing. So I was in and out fast enough. So I knew race day. I was like, oh, I'm not parking in the garage. So I found street parking and just parked on the street. Oh, nice. Um, and that was way cheaper. Um, I got all the way to the start line and realized my bib was still in the car. Michael. <laughs> and then ran back to the car and got my bib. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Aaron, did you go with him or did he just go I by himself? Not. Gotcha. No, okay, I, I just not. went. Gotcha. I asked him. I, You know, I didn't. I, I didn't think about it until like I don't know the yeah, day no before, and go. I was like, yeah, "Did you want me to?" Go. First, it's an out and back course, so it's not like yeah. I could have seen him on course. There's so I would have just been yeah. standing there for the full two hours. Yeah, like we do the same. Like we decide nothing. whether or not we're gonna come. And you know, yeah. Yeah. He was this like, wasn't one. That I just, was worth it. I yeah. just want to be run it and be done and come home. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, uh, you know, retain my a corral proof time. Um, which is like, I think like 840 pace-ish, something like that. 
so I did. I started out that way, and it was fine. But I've been having uh, abdomen issues. <laughs> we'll say. So apparently, I, uh, doctor thinks I have a fatty liver. So I'm having issues with fueling these days. Oh God! Because of processing, I guess for processing sugar and things like that. So maybe it's something that's been going on for a while. But so anyway, I was. Yeah, running... I mean, he's been having digestive problems for yeah. like. Uh, he's talked about it on yeah. here, like yeah. his stomach yeah. blowing up regularly. So. Yeah, so I think this may, I think we may have gotten to the bottom of it. Um, it's like I've been telling him he should go to the doctor for a while. Well, you know, I did it's eventually. Weird. Yeah, it's weird. So, it's so weird. <laughs> I did keep my pace for a good long time. Uh, and then on the, I was able to take two gels because I was going to take one every three and a half miles because mm. um, I was running fast. So, or fast for me. And so on the way back, on the turnaround, there was a little breeze, head breeze, nothing crazy. So I slowed down a little bit. But then, like, the second gel, like, it wasn't like a stomach cramp. It was like my abdomen was cramping Ugh. or something. It was very strained. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to take the third one. Yep, so your body I kind rejects of, the goo. Rege- rejects yeah, the goo. Yeah. Because I took, these were regular gels, like regular, like straight sugar type gels. And I should have used like one of the more real food type gels. Mm. I, I think, I don't think I would have had an issue then. So I I got to about mile, I think I really slowed down around when I got back to the boardwalk around 10 or so, nine or mm. 10. And I was like, I'm not going to be where I want to be. So I just started backing down because I wasn't. Yeah, my stomach wasn't feeling great. Jack Witzig actually passed me at some point on the boardwalk. Oh, just like a little um, angel fluttering by. He was just like, do, 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 do. Just you like know. barely I, I touching the him. ground. Yeah, I thought it was him, but I was like, I wasn't sure because he had just kind of passed me. And I was like, oh, maybe I was like, oh, I'm not going to bother him because I was slowing down because um, it was like the last two miles. And mm. it, with my stomach and all, I was like, yeah, I just I don't want to want to feel that. So but race wise, the course was really nice. Most of it was boardwalk. Oh, there was nice. some on the sh- some of it was on the street that was a little tight, but the road, you know, it has a wide, uh, you know, bike lane and stuff like that. Um, but you run all the way down past like Lucy the Elephant and all that stuff. If anybody's ever been to the boardwalk mm-hmm. in Disney, the elephant that's sitting on the fireplace mantle is Lucy the Elephant. Mm-hmm. You run past it. It's like in Margate or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of boardwalk, which is great. So you're running along the beach. So that's actually pretty nice. That's so nice. it's actually pretty nice. This course. used to be my uh, go to run place. It's yeah. there in Ocean City. It's mm-hmm. where I did like most of my training for the first like five years I was running. Mm. I know nothing Fantastic. else about what happened after the race because I literally got my medal, got a bottle of water and ran to the car. And left. <laughs> I would also like to point out that I, <laughs> at like six o'clock at night, saw his medal on the table. I was like, oh, this is really nice. It's got like, it's so it's like a diamond. And then in the center, it's got like the, um, the, um, Joker type mask on it. For oh, April yeah. Fools. For the April Fools. And it like has a, um, a, a spinner. So like, the cutout of the Joker's mask like spins. Oh, nice. And I was like, and it's all sparkly and glittery and it's super pretty. And I was like, oh, this is such a nice metal. And I spun the thing. He was like, oh, I don't even know what it looks like. I never even looked at it. <laughs> I, I was like, <laughs> I folded it up and put it in my pocket. I was like, what do you mean you didn't look at it? He's like, hey, he's like, I just put it in my pocket. I grabbed it and put it in my pocket I... and walked to the car. I, I was, was like... way more interested in the bottle of water at the end than I was in the metal. Oh my God. <laughs> he didn't even look at the metal. So when you realized you didn't need a proof of time, did you slow down it to cut... the point where you, can you still use it as a proof of time? Or oh yeah, it was still it? like, yeah. uh, I could use it for a proof of time. Yes, because it was still like a I can't use it. Yeah, gotcha. I can't use it for a Crowley proof of time. Gotcha. I mean, I, it might yeah. still get you no, close. It will not. Absolutely not. Why not? It's not. That's not a Crowley proof. Of time. You don't know that because they changed proof of time to to uh, two thirty. Oh, oh, that's possible. And a yeah, two ten yeah, yeah. used to get you a two ten half marathon. Used to get you corral b so it's possible that- it's possible i still would like to do another next year do another i also realized during this race 
I really don't like road races all that much. Mm. Well, I mean, that's not surprising. Yeah. yeah. And I really don't like running fast all that much either. <laughs> that, the, the other thing must I re- realized, be nice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, you know, I feel better after like a slow 50K than I, you know, after than I do fast. after a fast half. Yeah. Like, I feel well, way I also better. think that you used to feel better at this pace than you do oh, now. Yeah. Because well, that's you, for sure. Too. Because yeah, you haven't yeah, yeah. been do, like when you were running yeah. like stupid amount of miles and doing yes. things at a, a, a like a, you know, your easy pace used to be like a 10 Faster. minute mile. Yes. And now yeah. it's not. So I think that's also different, too. Yeah, this is very true. I don't run fast all that often. I probably should do that more. Yeah. That, it also taught me that lesson that I should probably do a little bit of speed work at little, least once a week. A little yeah. speed work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was nice. It was it was beautiful weather. It wasn't windy that day. Mm-hmm. Very there was like a light breeze. You know, you're down the shore, so of course it's gonna be a breeze regardless. Yeah. But uh yeah, the course was great. The boardwalk, then on the road a little bit, and then back on the boardwalk, you know, right back up on the boardwalk. So there was at least I would say there was a, probably pretty close to seven miles were on the boardwalk. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So and then you had, say, six on the road. Yeah. yeah. So that you was go a pretty good breakup. Yeah. The yeah. end of Vetner, right? And you yeah. come off at the end of it at the end of Vetner. Yeah. So uh, if you're going to do like a Jersey race, that's a, that's a nice little one. If you're doing Don't halves. Yeah. Violet and Melissa, who did the half marathon oh, God, it was in Atlantic torrential, City. Torrential, right? No, no. It was beautiful out. But oh. that course half for the half marathon goes through the tunnel around the Borgata oh, and back. That's not around as good the, of a course. And then it goes to like through the homeless people area. And then back up on the boardwalk. And so you don't get nearly as much boardwalk time. Uh. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing about Atlantic City. The casinos have destroyed the city for 40 years. So yeah. there is that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. That'll that do is it. What it is. Yeah, that is what it is. Yeah, the, the, the only bad part was having to deal with the casinos at all, for which I didn't have to do for race day, obviously, because I street parked and just walked up to the boardwalk. But. Mm. For bid pickup, I did. But you did. There was also an option for having your bid mailed to you for $15. Yeah. Or no, no, I'm not sorry. Not mailed to you, but uh, morning pickup, race morning pickup. Oh, gotcha. But that was limited, too. So they limited it to a certain number of people, and it was an extra $15. Mm. But if you're, like, traveling into town that day, it makes total sense. Yeah, it's It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Well run. Nice race. Nice course. Cool. Zombies. Zombies. (laughs) <laughs> who, who puts it? Who puts it on? I don't. I don't know. Who does put that on? Do you know? Offhand. Uh, the Atlantic City Race Series. Yeah, it's literally the that's it's that's oh what that's it is. what okay I thought that was yeah yeah it's their own race group they do it they have the half and the um and the full in um, the fall the fall and then this race yeah in, no and there's a beach. Beach Bungalow five miler, I think they also do. And that is actually on the beach. Oh, cool. Or ends on the beach. Ends on the beach. Yeah, no, really well, Ron. I would definitely like recommend that part of it for sure. Nice. Cool. All right. And then our last but not last least. Last but not least. God, we are busy this weekend. Yeah. Uh the Cherry Blossom 10 miler, which I've done two times before. So um, relatively familiar with it. Um, leading up to it, I had only done six miles. I had done it. I'd done a couple of 10 Ks and one six mile. I should have trained up to eight. Now, I'm be for, honest. can we, can we, can we back up? Just should have trained up to eight slightly. Mm-hmm. Let's back up. Um, for the cherry Bo- blossom 10 miler, um, this is a one that you can't just sign up for. You have to do it lottery. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, how far in advance is the lottery? It's Christmas time. It's Christmas. Time. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, I knew uh, it was early. I wasn't sure how far in advance it was. Um, okay, and then you, when you sign up, you also have to make sure you sign up to get a medal. Just if anybody wants to ever run this race, when you sign up for the 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 race you have to make sure you click the little i want a medal button and pay oh, really? for your medal ex- as an extra oh really i didn't know that yes interesting tis, tis true yeah huh. just wanted to back it up to the registration thing because uh, you know in case people didn't realize this is a lottery i was registered i did the lottery <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure I paid for the medal. And then I decided to not start the race. <laughs> um, it was a fast group of people. It's a lot of people. Like, it's a massive race. And yeah, I, I don't remember how many people do it. How many people? Thousands and thousands Yeah, of yeah that's like... Because, I mean, it's a lottery, yeah. so obviously it's got to be a... De- Is it like as big as Broad Street? I would say it might be as big or bigger than Broad Street. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. And there is a 14-minute mile pace requirement. Um, And if you do not maintain that pace requirement, they will basically sweep you around mile five. Okay. And that was just echoing in my head the entire time. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when we did um, Soul of City, I'm like, nope. I'm just going to get swept like <laughs> and then when I and then when I got there and I was watching the the start like there's a lot of this is a fast race this is a fast field of people and there's a ton of them and it's very crowded so like um and we well we, the elites the elites come out in droves for this one mm-hmm. oh my god yeah well yeah because like and and Diana ran the race and Nicole and Ryan ran the race. Um, But, you know, I'm standing by the start line looking at these massive corrals full of people. Right. And you can hear the radio of people watching like the competitive, like front, like the, the elites and like they're reporting back, like who's got a lead on who, how far they're back. Like, like they're like notable people at the front of these races because they're running for money. Right. And they're running for whatever. And it was very interesting because like they would keep checking in on like how the, how the elites are doing. Right. And I swear to God, like they barely got everybody out before the, the, the elites started finishing. Like it was, it was very (laughs) quick. Well, according to this, I didn't realize this, but it is the it serves as the USA track and field ten mile championship for the American men oh, and women. I did not yeah. realize that. Yeah. God, oh, wow. yeah, that's I, that's why there's that, so many fast people. <laughs> well, yeah, they were uh, they were all like they had like their own like special corral. But like that makes sense. We saw the we saw the start, and then the way that the race, like the course, like you could walk from the start to like the the just past the five mile mark very quickly it's very close to each other because it like kind of doubles back on itself and when we were at the five mile mark i didn't see barely like i if anybody was run walking Mm -hmm. that was an anomaly like nobody was run walking intervals like and so that just really reinforced the fact that i was like i was not prepared to do that race i would love to have done it but i did not obviously put the work in and i would have not felt comfortable being there before the race i was like looking at the results from last year because i was like trying to psych myself up and there is a line of disqualification at 14 minutes exactly nobody else finished oh my god like it's serious yeah so it's it's not like disney where if you start earlier and then Finish uh, and before it cuts off, I could. There is no, it's like I, it's I couldn't. Have, That's interesting. Yeah. I couldn't have hauled ass and like beat the five mile and then took it easy. Like uh, people really didn't take it easy the second half of that race. Like they just put in the work. Yeah, that's the, interesting. Most of the like the majority of it. I didn't realize that. Like because with. Like you said, with Disney, if you can get into the beginning corral, it's the 16 minute pace from the last person that starts. But in this case, it's that's not true. Yeah. They, I was, uh, I was yeah, intimidated. That's, that's I don't think stressful. I realized that until Tom looked at the results and it's just nobody over 14 minute mile. Oh, wow. Including yeah. the results. Yeah. Jeez. I wouldn't have been able to do that. At this point in my life, yeah. um, there is apparently twenty one thousand uh, dollars in money given out to the Americans. Oh, there you go, and sixteen thousand oh. in prize money for the international elites. Oh, so there is actually. In case you were wondering, yeah. what uh, I knew, Mike Wardian was there because he set a record for the American men in his age group. Oh God. Or something like that for 45 to 49. Something like that. Something yeah. Like that. yeah. 
and he ran like five thirties or something. I don't know. Something stupid. Something stupid. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> something really dumb. Oh my God. Yeah. The, um, were there cherry blossoms? There were some peak was like two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah that's curious. what it was, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah. yeah, they and it's they don't know when peak is going to be until no. like a couple. Yeah, of that's weeks the worst before. part about it. Yeah. So there were some. Um, I was traveling for work uh, last week, so I was gone like Wednesday through Friday. I think my flight got in at five. Um, Tom was able to pick up our bibs for Soul of the City whenever that was earlier in the week. And then Ryan and Nicole were able to go down to D.C. on Friday to pick up our bibs because they do a huge, like, bib pickup and expo. Uh, But it's down in D.C. and it's a huge pain to get into. So we were dreading having to do that on Saturday after oh, Soul of the City. So it was really God. nice that they did that. They actually took yeah. uh, the Mark train down and it was like three hours for them round trip to pick up bibs. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> God. So <laughs> for us, logistically, it's just kind of a pain. Like a, And you can't do it like race morning really at all all i don't think like they yeah. really discourage you not um, with that many people from doing it um so we were thinking oh god are we gonna have to go down on saturday and like get a hotel just because Ugh. like to go back and forth doesn't make sense um so it was really really nice that nicole and ryan were able to do that yeah, really and they said when they went in it was quick it was just you know the train ride down and it did the expo mm. didn't open until three. So it wasn't like they could go like early in the morning and get uh, it over with. So it was like it was like right at traffic on a Friday afternoon. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, it was bad. Um so like race morning, we decided we've driven one year Tom and I drove and we parked kind of near the Verizon Center. Um, but we've done the metro twice now. That's really easy. Um mm. I don't know, Tom, what do you think? Took like a half hour to get down there. Yeah. Um, did that in the morning. We tried not to get there super early. They said it was going to be in the 30s the entire race. It was not. I overheated immediately. I overdressed. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I, uh, part, the part of the problem was I had laid out capris and and I was like, oh, I'm going to wear capris. And then I checked the weather right before I went to bed. And I went, crap, I'm not going to be able to wear the capris. Oh, I have to wear long God. pants. And I should have stayed with and my you capris. you were not. You were yeah, wrong. Yeah. I mm. was wrong. Um, so I had, I did only just wear a, just a tank top and then like a light, like half zip on top, which was fine. Um... And then Tom came down and cheered. So that was good. So I was wearing like a hoodie. And right before I got in the corral, I was able to pass like my hoodie off to him (laughs) and wear my Mylar. Um, But we started, I don't know what time I had put down on my, I don't know, registration. Because I usually put like a normal time. Um, But we were relatively far up. Like we were in like the third corral. Um something like that and took off and we're feeling really good. Um, I don't know, probably, you know, under like under a 12 minute mile for the first like five miles. And then um, I started to die. Um, (laughs) We were trying to meet uh, Tom and Nikki and Scott who were cheering and they were on the left side of the road, which was a pain in the ass because we run on the right side of the road. Oh. And the problem is everyone who runs that race is so GD fast. <laughs> it it's feels hard to like, like, get across. It feels yeah. like you're going to die. Like yeah. if you're trying to. <laughs> like to maneuver, maneuver across. across. Yeah. So like we tried to get over a little earlier. <laughs> Yeah. So that like we were on the right side of the road to see them and it was kind of in an uphill and Nicole like took off and was running like an eight minute mile. 
Oh my and God. I could not keep up. And then I lost my shit uh, because she was going too fast. Um, and I was like screaming. And <laughs> oh, man. And I was like losing my mind. Um, and so then I saw Tom and I had to like stop. And like, I think Nicole and Ryan kept running for a little bit. And then I met back up with him because I like waited. But I like stopped to talk to Tom because I was so like hot and cranky. And I had to take my shirt <laughs> off and hand it to him. <laughs> and so then I kept running. Um, and literally, when Tom says like no one was wa- run walking, Nicole, Ryan, and I were the only people in our corral doing intervals at all. Mm. I didn't see another person walking at all until mile seven, maybe mile six, seven is when I started seeing people walking. Like nobody was Mm. doing intervals, Um, which I don't remember because like I said, it's been, I don't know. I've done it a couple of times, but I don't remember. I remember I being remember stressed the first year I did it. And then I looked at my time and it was like a 1350. <laughs> I was like, oh God. Um, and then the last time when I did it with you was faster than when I did it this time. Um, so I don't know. I must have just had a plan and was in the zone. It, Yeah. It was like, because we, we stood there and watched for a while. There was not a lot of break. There was not a lot of like, like... It was so thick. Was the field thick. was thick the entire <laughs> wow. time. So, like, if you threw up a hand, like, you, yeah, there's, you no, there's you no good place over. to stop. There's no, like, there's no good place to, you know. I I feel like at least with Broad Street, right, there's, like, a lot of people. I just looked up the results for both because I was curious. 17,599 finishers for Cherry Blossom. Broad Street is a little bigger at 28,000. But either way, that both of them are – so they're both they're huge, huge races. races. Yeah, regardless. But yeah. Broad Street, in the beginning, in the corral area, it's crazy crowded and yeah. you feel like it's huge and you feel that hugeness. But once you get out on course, because it's got both sides of the road open, like there's some sort of space almost immediately. And I remember Cherry Blossom because I do remember this very well from like – when you come around and you go underneath that un- underpass and oh, then do yeah. the out and back, like yeah. you are so cramped in that. When you're ever by the of, Kennedy Center. Yeah, yeah. None of the road space in that area is large enough for like it's a it's it's two lanes of a two lane highway. Like it's not like it's, it's like a four rough. lane highway the way Broad Street is. You're spread across like six lanes of, of traffic, basically. It, if you include the medians you're so on you're like s- one lane of or just like yeah, yeah. one lane oh that's super yeah tight. so it's oh, so man. so tight that's what i remember from cherry blossom is that yeah. it's super t- the roads are super tight there it's packed and then um when we were running by arlington cemetery there's a huge circle kind of right in front of the, the yeah. cemetery mm-hmm. um nicole dropped her gloves and then she oh, basically God. was like, forget it. And then Ryan was like, well, yeah. I'll get it. And then he was gone for like five minutes. And he's like, that was the <laughs> scariest thing I've ever done. He was like, it was awful. I, she's like, I, he's like, I shouldn't oh, have God. done it. He's like, I literally thought I was going to die. Because there's so <laughs> many people. Because there were so yeah. many people. And they were moving so fast. Like, everyone around us was running, I don't know, like an eight, seven, eight minute mile. Which to me looks like you're like flying. I don't, you're yeah, flying. Yeah. You could not be running fast. The <laughs> the winner of the race ran a four thirty one. It's bonkers. <laughs> bonkers. Oh my God. I was it curious. Was, <laughs> that was crazy. It was crazy. Um. So yeah. And then he was like, "I'm gonna die." So then, um, they had like pulled off to the side and waited for me after I I yelled um and handed Tom my shirt and I was like, "You guys are running too fast!" And then we like picked up with our <laughs> interval. <laughs> and then I started to like, and it was funny because like before that point, before like sprinting to like catch them, I was like, I actually feel great. Like this feels fine. We were kind of like, we were going a little fast for like a lot of chit chat, but we were like still like kind of talking. Um, and then after that point, I had like a mental breakdown and my pants were too hot and I couldn't take them off. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just was losing it. And I was like, all right, I want to get to mile seven and then I want to flip flop the interval. And then I couldn't get to mile seven. Um, and I just kept telling them to kind of go because I was kind of over it. And I honestly didn't really want to be around people, but they're like, we'll stay. Um, and then and you're like, no, but leave. And I'm die. like, I just, <laughs> I just kind of want to die right now. Um, but uh, we just like, again, we, we kept going, finished the race. Um, it was still a completely packed course. I was really Jesus. slowing down and like missing the interval. So I kind of, that's when Nicole Ryan, like finally left. It was like within mile nine, like we were like uh, probably at 9.5 where they had kind of, and I was just like, I'm walking and like, <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. Like, I'm forget. walking. I'm just, <laughs> You do you do finish up like kind of a long demoralizing hill. It's just the worst. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. All the DC races like to torture you by making you climb up a stupid hill at the it's end. It's just ridiculous. And they never seem that bad when you're first like go- see it. You're like, no. oh, that's not that bad. And then you're like at the hill and you're like, F this shit. Yeah. So um yeah, so I, I finished. It was really funny because, like, you can see where I started to have the meltdown in, in my times. Like, it was, like, really, really good. And then mile six-ish gets a little slower. <laughs> and then, like, mile, like, eight and nine were, like, 14 <laughs> minutes something. I was like, well, <laughs> there that was. Oh. Um but yeah, I just, I wasn't ready for it being that hot. We went out a little too hot at, at first. Um, but it's a beautiful race. The course is great. You run through really cool places. It's probably just based on the course, my favorite DC race. Like we did that yeah. army 10 miler and I really liked it. The cherry blossom course is a thousand times better. It's oh, just, okay. it's just you know, where you go, it's beautiful and you see a little bit more. It just feels a lot more DC. Um, the X or not the expo, the, um, the race reunion area and the starting lines all like right at the mall, like right behind the monument where Spider-Man saved his classmates. (laughs) It was all, it's all like right there. Um, they only give you water and a banana after. So you don't really get, they had like crappy cookies, but like they didn't really uh, have too much for you after. And then huh. like Aaron said, um, you have to pay for your medal, which not everyone knows. So I saw a few meltdowns happening oh boy. Um, at the metal pickup because there's literally a uh, Y or an N on your bib, like yes or no. And they mark oh, it off. Oh man. Um, Whoa. So people were not pleased with that. And the medals could not have been further for you to walk to. I think they were (laughs) further than they were last time. Um, It's like the furthest you can go. People were asking me when I came back with a medal, like, where do I go for my medal? It's like the furthest tent you can possibly go to. You know what? They were in a weird spot last time, Mm -hmm. too, because they were up over on the hill. If you remember. Yes. which was yeah, slightly they're... closer, but more of a pain in the ass because it was up a hill. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember now that you're saying that, I remember they were in a really weird spot because they weren't even by the finisher shoot. You actually had no. to go up no. like way further. Yeah, I do yeah. remember that. So, uh, yeah. So then we had to do that. The medals this year were not great, if I'm going to be totally honest. Mm. Um, well, that's why I wanted to give some fair warning. If you are going to register for this race, I do recommend this race. Um, but you do need to make sure you click the box for your T-shirt and your medal. Yeah. And it's, I think it's only like 20 bucks more or something. It's not. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a nice option because there are people who are not metal people. Yeah. And then like, you know, so to be able to have a cheaper race and then not mm-hmm. necessarily get the premiums, it's great that they give you that option. But the problem is that most races don't give you that option and nobody actually reads the things that they're no. signing up for. So I think, you know. um, I don't know if all Charm City Run races do this, but Soul of the City definitely does i still i think you still get a medal but you can opt out of your premium because tom does that a lot he opts out of like the Mm -hmm. premium okay so does that save you money yeah it saves you okay yeah i don't know how much it saves you yeah yeah i wish you could opt out of of certain things Yeah. yeah 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 
Um, and I think it's because it's usually like it's not usually a t-shirt. It's usually like a premium premium. It's yeah. usually like a jacket or a half zip. Yeah, the, or... the Susquehanna one he wears like oh that oh, Susquehanna like that. one is great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like this. This one's one. um thinner than Susquehanna, which is yeah. nice. And yeah. then it also has like the little watch thing that they're putting okay. in all the shirts yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so they're nice, but yeah. you know. You have a thousand of them, so yes, this um, is true. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was a lot for us over the weekend. We um did that, then we went to brunch, which was amazing in DC. It yes. was uh, what was the name of this place? Tom we went to the place called Johnny Pistolas in Adams Morgan. Uh, it was awesome. Mm. It was fifty bucks, all you can eat, all you can drink, Mexican brunch. Yeah. Um, so they had tostadas and you could get tacos and then they had huevos rancheros and all these, and it was all small plates and it was just, just keep bringing. So you'd order whatever you wanted and, you know, bring all these little tiny plates to share. Um, and then came home and I took a power nap and then we took my nephew to his first concert and I wanted to die. (laughs) It was a, it was a a long weekend. It was, I overcommitted. And after traveling, um, yeah, I was not I was not in a good place, just physically, yeah. mentally on Sunday. Yeah, it was. Oh man, we I ended was up doing dragging everything after our race. I mean, we went for a walk, but we all of the plans that we had tentatively made all got yeah, canceled. Yeah, kind of fell to the wayside. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up in the each afternoon after the race, we were able to relax. So we yeah, were, not, we were supposed yeah. to hang out with friends both days, and then it uh, both friends ditched us we went for a walk and got burgers on sunday so. i was okay with people ditching us to be honest i yeah we were very we, yeah, with the uh, yeah. toronto we had been in toronto the previous weekend so you know i always like when you do something big you want the next weekend to like you know just chill yeah just decompress and get your life back together yeah, yeah. tom did uh, tom went and saw some friends on saturday after soul the city and i took a nap and then <laughs> Like clean, like did all the laundry from my travel and like all you know yeah. all that getting your life back together stuff. Yeah. So yep. And then went to bed super early because I don't know what time did we get up for cherry blossom four fifteen fifteen. Oh God. <laughs> Oh. Because we had to That's... drive to the. <laughs> oh <laughs> I was yeah! Just preparing yeah. you for Run Disney in a week. Yeah, there you go. You were getting ready. Just preparing yeah. for yeah. Run Disney. Yep. It's true. So oh, that sucks. It was just. It was just a long weekend for us. Yeah. It was just. We were like, oh, do we have anything this upcoming weekend? And we don't. And we got really excited about it. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, Cherry Blossom's a great race. Um. If you're fast. Yeah, I would I would love to do that race. Oh, the other thing about the lottery is you can put in a lottery as a group. Okay, that's one of the oh, ones yeah. where you can do a group. Gotcha. And honestly, it's we like thought Rod we Street. would not get in. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, when we put it in, we're like, we'll just throw it in. And we probably won't get in because we're and going in as a group. And then we got in. Yeah. We were kind of like son of a bee. Um, like me with Mount Washington. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, slightly shocked with that. So, um, yeah, Tom, this will this will have to be like your redemption race. It. Yeah. I had I had such FOMO, and I was like, man, if I just put in the work, I I could belong in I could belong in that field, but like when I was watching, I'm like, man, you got some work to do, buddy, because. <laughs> Everyone, like, everyone is super fast. I'd like to do it again. Also, transfers for just like Broad Street. I don't, they use the same sy- transfer system too as Broad Street, uh, yeah. where they use like the website where you can like go and like post that you have a bib, mm-hmm. and then like they send the link through that. Um, transfers are really easy uh, for Cherry Blossom. Yeah. Wow. So. They- if you do it in time, I thought yeah. about it late. I too dumb. Uh, it's, like, it's actually really simple to do a transfer and uh, grab a transfer bib. Yeah. If you don't get into the lottery, they yeah. also added, um, and we have no notes on this because we did not do it. Uh, there is a five k now, which I don't know if it's new yeah, this year challenge. or new in the last couple of years. I just but saw that. Yeah, there's a five k on Saturday, 
So you, if you do both, it's some type of challenge. But Or you could just do the 5K if you want to. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't look up the course or anything. But it's pretty down there. It really is. And it was good weather this year. Um, I The first year I did it, it was windy. And they had to literally cancel the festival that day because all of the tents were blowing. Oh, um, God. And it was probably the coldest I've ever been was during that race. During and that then. One. Mm-hmm. The second time I did it, it was also freezing, but not <laughs> as cold. And I, you can tell because Aaron, Brittany, and I are wearing like coats. Um, <laughs> and our, I have fleece and our, on. Like in our, I don't wear a fleece. <laughs> I have fleece on in that picture. And, <laughs> and then every year I don't do it. It's like beautiful and fifty degrees. <laughs> and this year, like I said, I was expecting cold, and it was not. And not it cold backfired. enough. <laughs> and it backfired. And I wore like these really thick pants. It wasn't even like I just wore pants. I wore like thick pants. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I um I would like to do that race again. Maybe I'll think about doing it next year for a proof of time because I prefer to do a ten miler for a proof of time. Yeah, ten miles the way it is. Yeah, like like the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll do that next time. <laughs> you would hate it. If I'm going to be honest, Michael, like you would. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's really crowded. That's a good it's point. so it crowded. It was crowded. Here's what I d- couldn't understand. So we're watching and like Red Wave would go off and Red Wave would have a person with a 930 and a 10 and a 1030 pace stick, right? Yeah. And then oh, Blue they, Wave yeah. right behind them would go off and they'd have the same pace groups. Yeah, they had pace groups in every corral. Every corral. Oh, yeah. for, well, that's, like this, that makes for sense. For like the yeah. same pace, like for the same pace. Like yeah. I couldn't figure it out. But it's possible that there was so many people yeah, that the- were in that pace like range because like 10 minute to 1030 is like mid pack because that when mm-hmm. I when I ran broad street um, and got like my one proof of time that I used for a couple of years, um, I think I was just at 10 and it was like, I was literally at 50%. Like I was in the, the ex- like exactly half way through the finishers. So I think like that group of people on both sides is probably like thousands of people that run at that pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But um, no, it's a great race. It's been going on for 50 years. So there was one person. It was the 51st year. There was one person who's run all 51. Oh, my God. And they, I, was, I think it was a woman. I think they announced her. Wow, that's crazy. That's pretty cool. But um, I don't know. I was having a meltdown. So I didn't <laughs> hear all of it. <clears throat> like, everyone was like, where'd you go? And I was like, I went to go get my medal. Like, I was like... <laughs> I was like, I need a minute. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was busy. I'm tired. <laughs> Anything else on any of our races? No. No. All good. Do we want to wrap up with something good? I'll go first. Okay. And I think it should be the only thing anyone's talking about right now. But um, <laughs> All right. Cowboy Carter was released. Beyonce's new album as she says it's not a country album it's a Beyonce album and it is honestly it's one of the greatest albums I've ever heard start to finish there are no skips it's completely incredible no one is doing what she's doing and she just continues to I don't know be number one in the game like you can say a lot of people are overrated like you can't say Beyonce's over (laughs) Beyonce is appropriately rated because she just ups the game every time every time and Tom and I have arguments about Taylor versus Beyonce a lot it's a big conversation (laughs) in our house and I'm a firm believer um well, you know, you can't compare women, whatever. But I'm a firm believer that like Beyonce is <laughs> doing very different things. And yeah. she's doing experimental things in a way that feels popular and familiar. Like I said to Tom, I was like, I can't believe how experimental this album is. And yet it feels like a familiar pop album. Mm. Or, and it's just, I don't know. It's so good. What is AJR? 
AJR is it's the a band. band that we took um, our six, almost seven-year-old nephew to oh. on Sunday night after the Cherry Blossom race. Like and you're like, like I don't know. You're like, I don't know who AGR is. You absolutely do. Yeah, you they're like um, an it's, indie pop kind of band, right? They're like every song you hear on TikTok is AGR. Yeah, like yeah, you, I, it's it's. First, can it's we get to the good for part? Kids. That one oh, is AGR. Really? Uh-huh. Bang, bang, bang. There that we go. one's AGR. <laughs> like, like they've got a very <laughs> defined sound. Their their visuals are awesome. The level of energy is awesome. Um, I was highly entertained. There's a million kids there because they're very kid friendly. I don't kid think popular. they're kid friendly. I think they're kid popular. They popular, said they, not friendly. Yeah. They kid said, popular. Tom posted that they were kid friendly. They said the f word so many times. So many times. That's true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> like in the lyrics, and then in when they were just talking, uh, like they weren't censoring themselves. Like it, it wasn't no, like a kid show. No, they weren't. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed that show, and um, I'm glad that we got to be a part of our nephew's um, first concert going experience. Oh yeah, he and knew he, all I, the songs. He did. I think he I was only sing along. know them because of like of like reels and TikToks. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know that I would have known who they are outside of that. No, I had no idea who they were. Okay, I yeah. had no idea. They and were I very only- cute. I only know this because you posted that you were there and I was like, they look familiar, but I don't really know from what. And so then I looked it up and I I actually, they didn't look familiar. I just knew like once I saw their songs, I was like, oh, they like get played regularly on like um, reels and TikToks. Yeah. It's like three brothers, just like super nerdy. And they're like, like super it's... intelligent people too. Like one of them's got a PhD. We were looking them up because we were like, "Who are these people?" Are these people? No. yeah, I don't know much about them other than than that. Oh, uh, my something good is um, Toronto Asians. <laughs> ah, yes. Is that different than <laughs> than other than Asians? New Jersey Asians? <laughs> well, considering New Jersey, except unless you go up to. Uh, like North Jersey and yeah, Fort uh, Lee. those kinds of places, you're not going to find very many of us. Um, since, you know, my Asian population is, according to the census, is like three people. Well, but- <laughs> the next town over is pretty populous, actually. But. Uh, anyway, no, but um, we've now gone to, to Canada for the second time. And for the second time, I was uh, much more comfortable in that environment as I was amongst my Asian people, uh, they have a very high Asian population in Toronto as well. And on every street, there's like a million and one Asian restaurants to That's eat at. That's true. So we had um, Indian and we had uh, dim sum and we had ramen and we had Korean. And like it's just like it's the epitome of all the Asian-ness I wanted. <laughs> we oh, ate with uh, Ketcher, who created our artwork. We we did. We ate with Ketcher. Oh, nice. Um, he took us to a place called Mother Dumplings. Mm, uh, that was, was delightful. Yeah. Uh, just a, a table full of dumplings, dumplings and uh, buns. Mm. Mm-hmm. Connor was also in heaven because that's his favorite. So, God, that sounds so good. It was, it was yeah, good. It was fantastic. Um, I don't know. We had a good time there and uh i highly recommend and i recommend going to uh chinatown there's eight hundred thousand restaurants yeah down there true. and then on almost every other road there's a lot of we by our hotel which was not near chinatown no, was there was downtown. like a whole like like yeah. every other it was like a japanese barbecue place two korean places a noodle place a hand noodle place it like it was a boba tea place a second boba tea place it, like, it was just, a, yeah we went to a good indian place too yeah we randomly found yeah it was a couple blocks away and we were like oh, nice so yeah. Good. Yeah, so fantastic good food. such great food good food trip very good yeah. food trip yeah, which was sort of the whole point of why he wanted to go yeah so. yeah Worked out. Oh, we went to a cafe, uh, a cafe in an eyeglass store. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> the weirdest thing too. And then I, I, so I wanted a coffee it was shop. Eyeglasses and a coffee shop. I wanted a coffee shop. <laughs> And so there was a Starbucks and I was like, I don't really want a Starbucks. Like I'd like to find like a cute little coffee shop. And there was a place um, called uh, like optics. I I wear cafe or something like that. And we were like, is this, and there was a Boba tea sign on the, the, the window. And we were like, is this what we think it is? And like, we're trying to like look in the window and we're like, there's eyeglasses in the back. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cafe in the front. And it was exactly Exactly, exactly what you would what, think it was. Yeah. What it was. It was an eyeglass store that had a cafe in the front of it. And I got the best Vietnamese salted really caramel good. coffee. Yeah, and it was delightful. Yeah. And then I talked to the Asian guys in the back about Asian fits and gl or uh, glasses for a while. <laughs> or low bridge glasses. <laughs> it was the most interesting combo. And it was an excellent coffee shop it, as well. It was a yeah, very good yeah, coffee shop. So. Oh, nice. I love that. It's very strange. It was very weird. And then we watched many people walk by doing the exact same thing we did, where they looked at the sign and then tilted like, their head like, is that a coffee shop? It's a coffee shop or an place. Or an <laughs> yeah. What's, what's happening here? I don't know. Uh, my something good is simple. It's springtime. It's nice. To go with your allergies? Yeah. That you're well, for? yeah, it's like a matching pair. <laughs> I'm like, you're something good in your... I mean, it's been spring for a little ago. while now, but considering it rained for like three weeks after it turned oh, into spring yeah. here, <laughs> it's actually nice out now. So I'm going to count this as actual spring and we'll just ignore the three weeks where it didn't stop raining and we got like 10 inches of rain. So Yeah. Michael and I are going to come out of hibernation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, finally. <laughs> Finally, that one week it just rained and rained and rained and rained. Oh it's my terrible. gosh! Oh, uh, but we're in sunny spring now. It was very sunny and warm today. We've been going for walks after work. It's been very nice. Oh, nice, nice. Well, that'll about do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap us up with a quote. Uh, friend of the podcast, um, Dolly Parton. I was gonna say Ben Franklin. <laughs> ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a break from Ben Franklin for the moment. Um, we love you, Ben. But Dolly reminds us that the way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. Mm. That's right, Dolly. You you can find Dolly featured prominently on the new Cowboy Carter album from Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Which Tyrant! People were... That beat, man. Whew. Everyone have a great day. Thank you for listening. And we will talk later. Bye. Bye. It was called. <laughs>